UL Lafayette did issue a statement on Blanco's death. He says, quote, Coach Blanco once said that students were among his best friends and our students never had a better friend or fiercer advocate than Raymond Blanco. Also, Governor John Bell Edwards issued a statement. The governor says, quote, some people make a lasting impression from the moment you meet them. Coach was one of those people, end quote. In Acadia Parish, the Church Point community is mourning the loss of a beloved police officer there. Officer Holden Lee Hare passed away from medical issues yesterday morning. He leaves behind his wife and son, who are also police officers, and his daughter. The police chief at Church Point says Officer Hare will be greatly missed and leaves a hole in the department that cannot be filled. We now head to Raleigh, North Carolina, where yesterday a Christmas parade was held. During that celebration, disaster struck. A driver pulling a parade float lost control, crashing into a dance troupe, killing a child. Michael George has more, and I want to caution you, this video can be upsetting. A runaway truck turned a Christmas parade in Raleigh, North Carolina into a horrific scene. It started when this pickup truck pulling a parade float lost control. First, it slowly pushes through the crowd. Some performers scatter, but there's confusion. Many don't realize what's happening. Then the truck picks up speed and strikes a young girl, killing her. It was just a lot of chaos. Cops running, people running. Bystanders and police officers jumped into action, chasing after the truck and physically forcing it to a stop. People came up and were helping, like, grab it and slow it down a little bit. Witnesses say they thought it was an accident. The driver was honking to warn others that the truck was out of control. The drivers, you can see the people in the truck getting out, like, telling people, warning people, get out, get out of the way, we can't stop, we can't stop. They were screaming. Police say the driver is cooperating and is now facing multiple charges, including misdemeanor death by motor vehicle and reckless driving. Michael George, CBS News. Back here on the local front, family, friends, and food is what the Thanksgiving holiday is all about for many of us. Once again, here's News 10's Dawson D'Amico telling us how one not-for-profit organization is taking it upon themselves to bring help to those in need. Man Up For Christ is a local organization built on the Word of God, providing guidance for men and women in need of help. This Thanksgiving season, the group decided to take it upon themselves to help feed the homeless a Thanksgiving meal they will never forget. That's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're feeding the homeless and uh, hopefully that day and, and getting a meal that we can minister to them and show them the way to go and show them that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, that no man come to the Father except by him. Over 100 boxes of food was distributed to Catholic Charities of Acadiana who help homeless men and women. Since it's Thanksgiving time, you know, we, well, we decided to do uh, baked turkey, big ham, rice dressing, potato salad, and a uh, string bean with, uh, with a slice of cake and a, 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 a dinner roll on it, on the tree. Starting from Freshwater Ministries in Lafayette, giving back to the community and bringing people to Christ is what this organization is built upon. Green explains what the feeling is like to have the ability to feed the homeless for the Thanksgiving holiday. It's a great feeling that we can reach out to someone and show someone the way and show them that Jesus is real. Uh, we, we, we want to show them love and let them know that, you know, we have been down that road, you know, and God has delivered us. He can deliver you, you know, and that's what we want to do. That's the kind of love we want to express today. The organization is not done for the year. Man Up for Christ is looking to provide presents for children during Christmas. We're going to reach back out and reach out to the kids and pass them out a toy or something like that, the ones that's less fortunate. Due to a request by Catholic Charities of Acadiana, News 10 was not able to go to the facility as the food was being distributed, but be sure many people were provided their very own Thanksgiving meal. Dawson D'Amico, KLFY, News 10. Then yesterday was the first distribution day for Coast for Acadiana. Kids and adults across the area, they were able to pick up new or gently used coats donated by people across the community. We love our community. This is the 20th year Galafi has teamed up with Home Bank and St. Edmunds Catholic Church, Knights of Columbus, just to make sure no one in this area is cold this winter. That's the way we get it done. You, you collect them. Sort them out, clean them up, give them away. 
There will be another distribution day, the weekend before Christmas. You can find locations on our website. That's Calify.com. Then a police officer shortage have been an issue nationwide and right here at home as well. News 10's Rodrika Taylor looks into some of the departments facing shortages throughout Acadia and how agencies are working to resolve the issue. Police departments are responsible for protecting the citizens in their area, but lately there are just are not enough sworn police officers. Police shortages are impacting several departments right here in Acadiana. There's a lot of demands. It takes a special person to deal with the daily grinds of all this, and where 10 years ago, we were a profession that had the respect level that it deserved. News 10 spoke with several law enforcement agencies and learned that the shortage is impacting each of them. Spokesperson Robin Green with the Lafayette Police Department says they have a police shortage of approximately 10 percent. Chief Todd Dalbor says New Iberia Police Department is down 12 officers. They need 76 officers total. Abbeville Chief Mike Hardy says his police department is down 14 officers and needs 39 officers total. So we're having to juggle personnel and making sure that that we have the coverage we need. Chief Dalbor says there are several factors causing the police shortage. One of them is officers quitting. They leave and head to another agency. It takes us to eight months to train someone else to fill that, fill that seat. If anybody has three years experience and it, he leaves the department, that's like $100,000 walking out of your door. That experience and training is worth a lot of money nowadays. Another factor is the negative reputation of the police force at this time. Voices have been allowed to say that police are bad and who are bad. That 1% that made individual choices to do bad things that now are being held accountable. Chief Hardy says many times police officers want to make a career when they join law enforcement, but the pay may also drive them to seek something else. We need to pay our officers with their worth. We have to make this salary competitive with surrounding areas. Rodrigo Taylor, KLFY News 10. Trevor Sonia, over in the Weather Center, we have a mixed bag of um, weather conditions for us this week, moving into Thanksgiving, of course. Yeah, cold, warm, <laughs> rain chances, yeah. clouds, sun, a little bit of everything in the seven-day forecast. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures first. We're sitting in the 30s for this morning across northern portions of Acadiana and sitting in the 40s across most of Acadiana. Notice about 42 in Lafayette, uh, 43 in New Iberia, 37 in Opelousa. Satellite radar shows clouds in the process of clearing out, but it will be a slow process as it usually is with these clouds. But I do think we'll see some clearing later on this afternoon and that will give us mostly sunny skies at least temporarily before more clouds come in later on tonight and and for tomorrow. So temperatures rising accordingly, getting into the upper 50s for highs later on this afternoon. Future track shows sunshine, but notice tonight clouds coming right back into the area. That's in response to our next, our next upper level system that will be moving through. And that could give us some shower activity for tomorrow. Now it won't be incredibly heavy, it won't be widespread, maybe just some light sprinkles through the day, but enough where I have to introduce at least a 20, maybe 30 percent chance for a shower out there. You always have to watch these upper level systems. Sometimes uh, they produce more rainfall than what the models show. Lower 40s for this morning, rising into the upper 50s later on this afternoon. Mid 40s again tomorrow morning, and we're in the mid 50s tomorrow afternoon. I think we see a little less sun tomorrow and more clouds. That's why we'll be on the cool side once again. But temperatures continuing to trend some 10 to 12 degrees below average for this time of year. Our next upper level feature moves in for tomorrow, giving us that cloud increase and that slight uh, shower chance. And then for Thanksgiving. Thursday, yet another system moving in. We do have some differences between the GFS and the Euro model. Those are the two main models that we use, uh, among others, and they're showing a system coming in for uh, Thursday, maybe lingering through Friday. Firstly, uh, here's the Euro model for you. It does show some shower activity moving in on Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday, models have us dry, so that's good there. It has a system coming in Thanksgiving Thursday, but the difference comes Friday. It quickly clears us out. GFS model is different. It shows the showers coming in for tomorrow, so pretty high confidence. We'll see at least maybe a 20-30% chance for showers for tomorrow and a dry Tuesday-Wednesday. 
Wednesday, but for Thanksgiving Thursday, it has most of the storm action actually still across eastern Texas. It has a system moving in Friday and then lingering through Saturday, giving us some heavier rainfall. So we have two different models there and two different solutions. So we definitely need some time to iron things out. But as of now, my forecast favors the Euro model. 58. Your high today, clearing clouds, a northeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Seven day forecast shows a 30% chance for showers on your Monday, mid 60s Tuesday, warming trend for Wednesday and Thursday. I had that next shower chance on Thursday, followed by a clearing Friday and Saturday. Again, I'm going with the Euro model. GFS model keeps the rain in the forecast through Friday and Saturday. So that forecast could change for Friday and Saturday, but uh, mm -hmm. a pretty high confidence.